Hey everybody, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to talk to you guys about how do I map a MIDI controller like this Akai APC40 to a lighting console. So when you're working with a lighting console, oftentimes the most inexpensive way to get a bunch of playback buttons, a bunch of faders, and or programming controls can be through MIDI devices. If, with the console you're using, the developers allow you to use MIDI, there's usually no less expensive way to get a bunch of controls. Plus, it's a great tool to have whether you're a professional lighting designer, a hobbyist, or someone else, as something you can use to make music, work with lighting, work with different platforms. Hey, I think you can even use MIDI controllers like this with uh, programs like Photoshop. So, regardless, today we're going to talk about different ways to use MIDI controllers with a lighting console. So first we're going to dive into programs that have a MIDI learn functionality like NTX DMXs or Shave Show Express and then we're going to dive in how to use it with professional consoles and be able to map your MIDI controls quickly and easily. Let's dive in. So first things first I'm using this Akai APC40 this is the original version as an example to show you how to map MIDI controllers but the truth is any MIDI controller is going to work just fine for you. And so in this example, the APC40 in particular has a few different modes. So if you're not familiar with your MIDI controller that you've got in front of you, it may be any specific MIDI controller, you may need to set the mode to whatever mode you want. Now with the Sakai, when it boots up, when it first boots up, it's in a mode where these track selection buttons actually change what happens up here on what I use as playback buttons. And so literally page one versus page two are different MIDI commands for these other buttons. And I don't want that in a lighting console. For me, when I'm MIDI mapping a controller to a lighting console, I want the buttons, whenever I hit this button, I want it to be the same MIDI value every time. Whenever I move this fader, I want it to be the same MIDI value every time. So that even if I want to do multiple pages or complex things like that, I'll do that inside my lighting console and keep my MIDI controller consistent. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop open this APC40 mode change script. Uh, I'll link to this below. This is an easy way to change your APC40 mode. And I'm going to put it into alternate Ableton live mode. You notice it changed a little bit when I switched it over and now I'm good to go. I'll close this program. A lot of times when you do change the MIDI mode on a MIDI controller, you want to make sure there aren't any programs open that are using MIDI. So on the simplest way to map a MIDI controller is to use a program where it's easy to map. So I'm actually going to pop up DMXs here, okay, from NTech, great program. And it's literally as simple as launching the program, going to preferences, going to your MIDI settings, turning on, the controller you want to use and then literally right clicking on the channels you want learn MIDI control move the fader press the button and you're good to go perfect for example with the button in DMXs I'll learn I'll press a button and that button's now gonna bump that channel now this will work in programs like DMXs NTX D Pro Shave Show Express all have modes like this where it's easy to just get get in there Right click on a button that's on your screen, press MIDI learn, and you're good to go. Now, if you're using a professional level console, then you may be familiar with Show Cockpit, which is a program that a Portuguese developer, Ricardo Diaz, made. And it's basically an updated version of his previous MPC tools and GMA tools. And it's pretty stinking awesome. Okay. So, what you can do with this software is take MIDI controllers and apply them to lighting consoles and, and map them inside at this time with Onyx, with Grand MA on PC, and uh, also with Light Jockey, probably more to come in the future. So I can literally go in here, say I create a new project, and I will just give it a name, and I can bring in my elements. And so this is really cool for mapping to a lighting console because with a controller like an APC40 here, I can go in, and, and with this software, you buy just the plugins you need and uh, you don't need all of these. I can go here to uh, external control 
MIDI. And then there's all these different controllers in here. He's always adding more that you can patch into this software. Now you can also patch generic MIDI, which allows you to literally go in. I'll actually do it here. We'll call it generic MIDI. We'll set up our APC 40 as the controller. We'll turn off motorized faders because it doesn't have them. And we'll open this window. We can enable learn. Go ahead, make sure we've turned it on. Then open this window again, enable learn. And now when we press buttons, boom, it maps them into the software. Now I accidentally did these buttons on the fader page. So I'm going to ignore those right now and uh, put them over here instead. Now we're programming that stuff in a perfect world. I would restart from scratch, but I can then go in with the faders and programs that I patched here. I can go to mapping. I can grab my element. First, I've got to add a console. So I'm going to add lighting and uh, obsidian onyx. I can go to mapping. I set an onyx function. And then I can set it up with a button or fader as needed. Now, in this, of course, faders are only going to map to faders on your MIDI controller and buttons only to buttons. And so there's some flexibility there, but it also, the software also helps you out. You can literally just map playback one, two, three, four, five, six, however many you've got, and you're good to go. Now, you can also go ahead, and the really cool thing about Showcock, but this is what sets it apart and makes it as easy as the MIDI Learn in those other consoles, is you can go in, and instead of generic MIDI, I'm going to add this APC40. So external control, MIDI, APC40, that's the one I have right there. Set up to work with my APC40 open the window. And then the crazy cool thing about this is when I actually go back here and I turn this thing on, my MIDI controller lights up. I can open this window. I can change the way the knobs work um, on the side, and I can also change the feedback. So this is what's happening during different feedbacks in the console software. And then the crazy awesome thing about this is when I set this up with something like Onyx and I go into the mapping tab, I go to a main fader, I down click here, select my APC 40 since I've got multiple in here. Uh, generic MIDI was previously found. So I'm just going to go ahead and now I can go in here. Boom. Fader one, main playback one, go to, oops, undo that there. Three, four, five, six, seven, and other eight. And then there's a fader with no button. So I'm just going to ignore the fader with no button there. It's appropriately labeled. Boom, buttons. Now I can go ahead to uh, playback buttons. Put those on these different buttons here and be good to go. Now we'll go ahead and uh, actually go ahead and launch Onyx. So now I've got Onyx, I've got it open. I've got it enabled in show cockpit. And we can see here in my Onyx file, as I move faders, it moves the faders perfectly matched. Say I go here, actually, let me go ahead and move something around here because I've only got these eight faders on the Akai. So I'm just going to move this main show over here just to show you that I can pull that up. I can pull that up. I can get that intensity. And if I went ahead and I mapped these buttons, I would have full control over the playback of this cue. Let me show you how that works quick. So we'll go here to mapping again. Again, this is totally, you can do this live and on the fly, which I think is just amazing. Um, I think Ricardo is just an absolute wizard. And so I go to playback button, press the button. Then here on the buttons page, I didn't show you this before, I can actually click the button and it jumps right to it. Boom. Where was that? Oh, it was right there. So now make that the topmost button. Then I go here and I make this. Was I paying any attention to that? No, I made it playback six and it needs to be playback eight, but I can just edit. Boom. Save it there. We're good to go. Now I can go press this middle button. So playback eight up. And then this bottom button. And these are what they're called on the Akai interface. Make that down. So let's put that one. Yeah. Press that. Now. Back here to elements, everything's live. Boop. Press play. Oh, just played. I've got feedback on the light. 
that the cue faded in when it finishes. So it's fading in. Boom, feedback on the light. This is pause and back. And then this is the flash button. Awesome. So you can probably see why I like Show Cockpit so much. It's a really awesome program. And this is not a commercial for Show Cockpit. Uh, Ricardo has not paid me to say any of these things. Um, he's just a really nice guy who puts up this software and is constantly updating it and making it awesome. So I can't overemphasize that. But whether you use a Show Cockpit or you do MIDI mapping internally in your console on its own, I hope you learned something from this video today. And if you want to learn more and see some more examples and other things like that, hop over to LearnStageLighting.com where I've got a full article on how to map MIDI controllers to your lighting console. Then go ahead and be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and don't forget to click the bell to see our next video. I'll see you guys around soon and thank you for watching.